What's going on guys? Jordan Modern Day Muscle back at you with another video. So finally we are about to um, install the, uh, the diffuser. Um, I got the right parts after it took a very long time for them to come in, but the, I got the right parts now. As you can see, Paul is uh, jacking up the car right now. I'll put his Instagram on the screen. Make sure you go and follow him and make sure you go and check out that last video, man. His swing shot was really, really dope. So as you guys can see right here, this is the part that would not go on my car because my cross member is non-threaded. So this part does not work on um, challengers or chargers that don't have a, uh, a threaded cross member. So this is the one that I got from ZL1 right here. As you can see, it more or less looks like the same exact part, except it has this, um, I guess I guess you would call it a rivet. And I think when you screw it in, these areas spread right here. Also to the uh, the threaded part right here, it's a little it's a little skinnier than the uh, the original one that I got it. What, bro? What are you talking about, man? You heard what I just said? <laughs> got it. The original one that I got, but um. Yeah, man, um, I'll, uh, I'll explain my experience at the end of this install. Make sure you stay tuned for that because I really feel like it's something you should know. Oh, well, he's high. I'm behind the car now, but uh, Mr. Uh, Garage Driven right here. Got my car hiked up right now. Oh, there, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, the, the lowering king, lowering king over there. <laughs> yes, it's my dog Will right here. Yeah. <laughs> Say what? I quit all my other jobs. You quit all your other jobs, you're just the lowering king now? The lowering king now, that's hey, it. That's what it is, man. Yeah. I need that extra time, man. Holy <laughs> shit, hell, you gotta think about it. You lowered what? Most of the cars in Orlando and Tampa? Hell yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, the lowering king right here, man. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> As you guys can see, these are the two uh, bolts side by side, just so that you guys can see the difference here. Like I said, if you don't have a threaded cross member, you need this one right here that my thumb is touching. If you do have a threaded one, it's this one over here that my index finger is touching. All right, so you, you will need the ZL1 add-on rivet, rivet nut tool. Mm -hmm. So the rivet nut just goes right on it. Right on the edge, you just screw it on, put it up in the hole, and then once you clamp it down, it'll close, you know, lock the rib nut in place. And then you just unscrew it. So now, this can go up into this threads for it to catch. There it go, right there. This is where we got stopped last time. Yep, there it goes. So those go up and then now it's able to stay. There it goes. Cool. Real quick guys, this is how it should look after you installed the, the rib nuts. This is um, what you should see right here, right behind the diff. Yeah, so right now Paul is taking out the rivets. Um, the difficulty on them may vary. As you can see, um, he had to like basically yank that out. One broke. Yeah look like this yeah see that mm -hmm. and then this one this one right here broke right here yep. guys yeah so yeah um he's just taking out the rivets so uh he's able to catch catch those holes with these uh with these bolts right here that you see wait are these called bolts right yeah nuts nuts there you go but yeah anyways um he's taking those out and uh so that these can go in um, the holes in, in the back of the bumper right there. So right now guys, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're installing the diffuser and it's kind of wide, so it's hard for one person to do it. So I definitely recommend two people. Hey guys, what we're learning as we're installing, they put holes right here so you can uh, screw in the, uh, the bolt or the nut. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but there's holes actually at the bottom of this to put the screwdriver in through. So I guess they thought about that yeah, part. Yeah, I guess they thought about that part. Bro. Yeah, because how else would you do it? Huh? Yes, I see. Well, 
Is that in the hole? That's in the hole. Oh, okay. Because I was looking at the uh, the parts over by your head, and I was making sure those holes were aligning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You got to reach all the way through. <laughs> so, guys, since the diffuser's back on, you can no longer jack the car up from the back because um, my car is lowered. Yeah, not only I jack from the dip, but it's not possible anymore because the diffuser's just way too low. Yeah, so if you're wanting to do this install, pay attention to where he's jacking. On the actual frame. Good. As you guys saw, Car was rolling out. Let's check out this mod. This diffuser, man. What you guys think about that, man? That looks amazing. Let me guys. Let me know what you guys think, man. I think this absolutely looks dope. Mind you, my car is lowered. Still has pretty good clearance. You just got to be careful when you're backing up, obviously, or if you're going on, you know, inclined areas. But this is a deluxe diffuser on a challenger that's lowered on h and r springs let me show you guys that the gap right there let, let me know what you guys think man i think this looks amazing give you guys some more looks right there this looks amazing man get that side profile for you guys there's a side profile right there get the the quarter degree turn right here that looks good that looks good man i love it hey what's going on guys um the diffuser looks great. It came out way better than what I thought it was gonna look. I wanna go over costs and also um, my experience of getting the diffuser with everything that went on. So the diffuser comes around about $300 or you know $299 and change, plus shipping, that's $350. Um, I should have looked on YouTube for a discount code because I think that waived shipping, so it would only be $300, but at the time I wasn't thinking. So um, there's the cost. So I just wanna quickly go over the timeline um, of uh, how long this took me to get this installed. So I paid for it maybe a week or so um, before it shipped, cause it shipped on May 4th and I know for sure it was like a week beforehand because it has to be built. And I understand that, um, you know, businesses right now are working at a limited capacity because of, you know, the pandemic. So I totally get that as well. But anyways, it shipped May 4th and it was delivered on May 11th, right? Which is pretty good. Um, we attempted to install it at Paul's house May 16th. Um, we realized that we had the wrong hardware um, I had the threaded hardware and I needed the unthreaded hardware, which I'll throw up a video of uh, the differences between the threaded hardware and the, uh, the unthreaded hardware. After that, once we realized once um, it wasn't going to be installed because we had the wrong hardware, I sent an email that same day on May 16th. So just make sure you're following me. So I sent the email you know, basically explaining that, you know, I had the wrong hardware, which was honestly my fault because there is a selection where you can select non-threaded um, or unthreaded hardware. But by default, if you go on their website, it, it has um, the threaded hardware already selected, which, you know, if you don't know any better, you're going to think that's normal.
I sent the email May 16th. I basically explained, saying I tried to install, explained that, you know, I had the wrong hardware, X, Y, and Z, and, you know, um, that I'm, I'm running a YouTube channel and I want to get the install, you know, done so, you know, people can see it and, you know, um, I also want, I'm also e eager to get the, uh, the mod on the car. So, I sent the email May 16th, which I believe is a Saturday. So um, I was expecting to get an email response maybe on May 18th because I believe that was the Monday. Um, I didn't get a response email. Um, so I called them on May 19th asking if they saw my email or X, Y, and Z. Um, after the phone call, I got an email on May 19th saying if I send the threaded hardware back um, via snail mail, I can get refunded for a cost of $9.99. It would take two post-it stamps as the guy was telling me to mail it back and um, I would have to pay for the uh, new hardware, which is um, $9.99 plus tax or plus a shipping, I should say, it comes out to $15.94. So, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, you, you guys can comment down below and let me know, but I didn't send the hardware back because I just didn't think it made sense. Looking down, guys, because I made notes because I didn't want to, I didn't want to make sure I was um, saying anything wrong or I was missing something. I also asked in the email um, how soon I would get the part. I was told it would ship tomorrow, which would mean the very next day. So I emailed again on May 19th and gave them a call on May 19th. And based off of the email that I, well, the email that I received on May 19th, it would ship tomorrow, which would mean May 20th, which May 20th is a Wednesday. So May 20th passes and um, I don't see that it's shipped and I do not see any tracking info. So I send them an email May 21st asking for a tracking info because I did not see that the item shipped. I received an email the same day that the hardware is being built and will receive an email the moment it ships. I have to, as the customer, I have to call back and ask about it because I'm not getting a response or I'm not getting any follow up. I think in, the, in between that, before I go further, I called him again and he said that the part was laying on the desk or something like that saying that they were waiting for something else to come in so that they could finish it. I don't know, something like that, but um, that was in between, that was in between May 21st and May 26th. So um, I emailed again on May 26th. So mind you, I got a response email saying that I will get an email the moment it ships on May 21st. But before then I was told that it was supposed to ship May 20th. So I'm emailing again on May 26th asking for any progress because I haven't gotten an email, I haven't gotten a phone call, nothing, right? I receive an email the very next day, not, not even the same day, I receive an email May 27th that it shipped on May 26th and tracking info was provided finally. So then the hardware was delivered May 30th and then like, as you guys know, I worked during the week, so I couldn't get it installed, you know, immediately. And then I got the um, diffuser installed today, which is June 6th. Basically what I'm getting at is, this is just my experience. You know, um, I've had other people, you know, friend, real close friends of mine that have ordered from ZL1 and they had no issues. Also too, this was um, before the, the pandemic. So let me put that out there. You know, every business is working um, at a limited capacity, which I totally understand. But the, uh, the thing that I'm pointing out here is that like I was told that it was supposed to be one way and then I had to continue to call them. And I'm pretty sure it was annoying on their end too because I was continuing to call them asking about something that I had paid for. Just let me know if this has happened to you guys. I'm just sharing my experience. Um, my name is Jordan. You know what to do. Follow me on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, Modern Day Muscle. I appreciate all the 
the, the views that you guys give me. I appreciate that you guys keep watching my videos. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. But um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video, man.